The Playboy of the Western World is a three-act play written by Irish playwright John Millington Singh and first performed at the Abbey Theatre, Dublin, on 26 January 1907. It is set in Michael James Flaherty's public house in County Mayo on the west coast of Ireland during the early 1900s. It tells the story of Christy Mayen, a young man running away from his farm, claiming he killed his father. The locals are more interested in vicariously enjoying his story than in condemning the immorality of his murderous deed, and in fact, Christie's tale captures the romantic attention of the barmaid Pegeen Mike, the daughter of Flaherty. The play is best known for its use of the poetic, evocative language of Hiberno-English, heavily influenced by the Irish language, as Singh celebrates the lyrical speech of the Irish. Topic. Characters Pegeen Mike, young barmaid Christy Mayen, a man who brags he has killed his father Old Mayen, Christy's father, a squatter Michael James Flaherty, a publican Margaret Flaherty, called Pegeen Mike, Michael's daughter, and the barmaid Sean Keogh, a young man who loves Pegeen Widow Quinn, a widow of about 30 Philly Cullen and Jimmy Farrell, farmers Sarah Tansy, Susan Brady, Honor Blake, and Nellie, village girls A bellman Some peasants and farmers Topic. Synopsis. On the west coast of County Mayo Christy Mayen stumbles into Flaherty's Tavern. There he claims that he is on the run because he killed his own father by driving a loy into his head. Flaherty praises Christy for his boldness, and Flaherty's daughter, and the barmaid, Pegeen, falls in love with Christy, to the dismay of her betrothed, Sean Keogh. Because of the novelty of Christie's exploits and the skill with which he tells his own story, he becomes something of a town hero. Many other women also become attracted to him, including the widow Quinn, who tries unsuccessfully to seduce Christie at Sean's behest. Christie also impresses the village women by his victory in a donkey race, using the slowest beast. Eventually Christie's father, Mayen, who was only wounded, tracks him to the tavern. When the townsfolk realize that Christie's father is alive, everyone, including Pegeen, shuns him as a liar and a coward. To regain Pegeen's love and the respect of the town, Christie attacks his father a second time. This time it seems that old Mayen really is dead, but instead of praising Christie, the townspeople, led by Pegeen, bind and prepare to hang him to avoid being implicated as accessories to his crime. Christie's life is saved when his father, beaten and bloodied, crawls back onto the scene, having improbably survived his son's second attack. As Christie and his father leave to wander the world, having reconciled, Sean suggests he and Pegeen get married soon, but she spurns him. Pegeen laments betraying and losing Christie, I've lost the only playboy of the Western world. <laughs> Topic. Riots Riots occurred in January 1907 during and following the opening performance of the play. The riots were stirred up by Irish nationalists and Republicans who viewed the contents of the play as an offence to public morals and an insult against Ireland. The riots took place in Dublin, spreading out from the Abbey Theatre and finally being quelled by the actions of the Dublin Metropolitan Police. The fact that the play was based on a story of apparent patricide also attracted a hostile public reaction. Egged on by nationalists, including Sinn Féin leader Arthur Griffith, who believed that the theatre was not sufficiently political and described the play as 
A vile and inhuman story told in the foulest language we have ever listened to from a public platform. And with the pretext of a perceived slight on the virtue of Irish womanhood in the line, a drift of females standing in their shifts. A shift, garment, being a female undergarment, similar to a nightgown, a significant portion of the crowd rioted, causing the remainder of the play to be acted out in dumb show. Nevertheless, press opinion soon turned against the rioters and the protests petered out. Years later, William Yates declared to rioters against Sean O'Casey's pacifist drama The Plough and the Stars, in reference to the Playboy riots. You have disgraced yourself again. Is this to be the recurring celebration of the arrival of Irish genius? In the 1965 film Young Cassidy, a riot occurs during a play by the fictitious playwright Cassidy, following which the character Yates refers to sing and speaks similar words, starting with, You have disgraced yourselves again. The production of Sing's play met with more disturbances in the United States in 1911. On opening night in New York, hecklers booed, hissed and threw vegetables and stink bombs while men scuffled in the aisles. The company was later arrested in Philadelphia and charged with putting on an immoral performance. The charges were later dismissed. Topic. Performances In September 2007, the play returned to the Abbey in a modern adaptation by Bissia de Gunn and Roddy Doyle. Set in a suburb of West Dublin, it tells the story of Christopher Maloma, a Nigerian refugee who claims to have killed his father with a pestle. In 2011, The Old Vic, in London, played host to a classic adaptation directed by John Crowley starring Robert Sheehan, Neve Cusick and Ruth Nega. Topic. Adaptations Topic. Theatrical In 1912, Sil Vara and Charles H. Fisher translated it into German as Der Held, literally, Hero, De Westerlands or Der Held der Westlichen Welt, and had it published by Georg Muller and performed at Max Reinhardt's Kammerspiel, Berlin, at the Neue Wiener Buna in Vienna, and at the Stadttheater in Munster. In 1973 the Irish-language national theatre group Tabedhark na Gaeliva produced an adaptation in the Irish language by Sean O'Cara entitled Buashale Bear and Doawan Thiar. The play was adapted in 1984 by Trinidadian playwright Mustafa Matura, lifted out of turn-of-the-century Ireland and set down in 1950s Trinidad, and retitled Playboy of the West Indies. In 2006, a Mandarin Chinese version of the play set in a hairdresser's shop in a Beijing suburb was performed at the Beijing Oriental Theatre. It was produced by the Irish contemporary theatre company, Pan Pan. The play attracted controversy when a member of the audience complained about the shortness of the skirt worn by Sha Sha, playing the Sarah Tansy character. Following the complaint, the play was attended by two policemen. Topic. Operatic and musical In 1975 Giselle Herkleb's operatic adaption Ein Warer Held a True Hero premiered at the Zurich Opera House. A 2003 operatic rendition by Mark Alberger was produced from 23 to 26 August 2007 by GHP, SF Cabaret Opera at Oakland Metro Opera House, in Oakland, California. A musical theater version, written by Kate Hancock and Richard B. Evans, premiered at the stage's 2005 musical festival at the Theater Building Chicago. 
In 2009, a musical adaptation entitled Golden Boy of the Blue Ridge premiered in New York City. With music by Peter Mills and a book by Peter Mills and Kara Reichel, the musical transplants the story to 1930s Appalachia and is set to a bluegrass-flavored score. Topic. Film and television movie A 1962 film version of the play was produced in Ireland, with the screenplay by writer-director Brian Desmond Hurst. It stars Siobhan McKenna as Pegeen, Gary Raymond as Christie, and Elspeth March as Widow Quinn, with music by Sean O. Riata. A 1994 TV movie adaptation was entitled Paris or Somewhere. Set in rural Saskatchewan, it starred Callum Keith Rennie as Christy Mayen, a young American farmer who arrives in town and claims to have killed his father. He charms the town with his story, particularly Peg Molly Parker, the daughter of a local store owner and bootlegger. The screenplay was written by novelist Lee Gowan. A film adaptation was also made in 2016, set in the USA and titled, My Father Die. It was written and directed by Sean Brosnan. In June 2018, a new feature-length film production entitled Christy Mayen, Playboy of the Western World was registered by Swiss producers on IMDb. Filming will be in Bray, Ireland and scheduled for late October, November 2019. The producers procured a print of the play from a notebook version of the text published in 1912 and upon which they based their screenplay. Topic. Quotations Source it's great luck and company I've won me in the end of time. Two fine women fighting for the likes of me. Till I'm thinking this night wasn't I a foolish fellow not to kill my father in the years gone by. Christie. Drink a health to the wonders of the Western world, the pirates, preachers, poteen makers, with the jobbing jockeys, parching peelers, and the juries fill their stomachs selling judgments of the English law. Sarah Tansy. Pagine Mike, your gowl is on a cheerio ting still. Christie, upon the penultimate relationship ending moment. It's well you know what call I have. It's well you know it's a lonesome thing to be passing small towns with the lights shining sideways when the night is down, or going in strange places with a dog noising before you and a dog noising behind, or drawn to the cities where you'd hear a voice kissing and talking deep love in every shadow of the ditch, and you passing on with an empty, hungry stomach failing from your heart. Christie. A daring fellow is the jewel of the world. Michael Flaherty. Dot the blow of alloy, have taught me that there's a great gap between a gallus story and a dirty deed. Pagine Mike. You've turned me a likely gaffer in the end of all, the way I'll go romancing through a romping lifetime, from this hour to the dawning of the judgment day. Christie. Oh my grief, I've lost him surely. I've lost the only playboy of the Western world. Pagine Mike. <laughs> Notes.